Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Treasure Island, which is a deduction game where players are mutinous pirates trying to steal Long John Silver's buried treasure. And I'm going to do a two-player run through today, although before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Treasure Island, everybody. Somewhere out here, the nefarious Long John Silver is going to bury his treasure. Um, but shortly after that, his crew mutinies, they throw him in the Huskow, and they start interrogating him, trying to find where the treasure is. Now today, I am going to be Long John Silver, trying to keep my cards close to my chest, and Jen will be controlling three pirates. Uh, she'll count as one player, but she will have three miniatures on the board that she can use to try and figure out where that treasure is and get it before I escape from prison and go try to grab it myself. This game has a timer, and there's uh, two sides. This is the two four-player side. You can flip this over for the three uh, and five-player side, which changes how many days there are. I've got 19 days to try and hope that Jen does not figure out where my treasure is, because then I get out of prison and I can race her to find it. Right. So that's the situation. How do we go? Well, first of all, Jen's got to put her starting pirates on the board. She has the green, the blue, and the red. There's also an orange one. If uh, we were, We'd have this if we were playing with more players. And, alrighty, each, each of the pirates has their own starting position. The red here, the green here, the blue over here, and the orange over here. And you might be having a hard time seeing those. And that is because, while this is a beautiful map, it is a beautiful work of art from Vincent Dutre, one of the best artists working in board gaming today, it is a very busy map. And so the developers decide, well, hey, if you want to have an easier time trying to identify landmarks and, and um, you know, notes and stuff like that, you can flip the board over. Which, as you can see, I don't know, does it make things pop a little more? There's the red spot, the green spot, the blue spot, the orange spot. I'm going to go ahead and play with this side because you almost kind of have to, although it's not good enough. Um, it is still going to be tough to see where pen markings are done on this board. But it's a little bit easier on this um, subdued side as opposed to the big, bright, colorful board. So anyway, Jen's red pirate, green pirate, and blue pirate start over there. And we uh, take this... A little uh, area divider here, and we have to make a note that my treasure, Long John Silver's treasure, cannot be anywhere within this circle for the red pirate, within this circle for the green pirate, and within this circle for the dastardly blue pirate. Okay. Which, by the way, Jen, she could consider herself the blue pilot. She is Anne Bonnie. You can see she's got her little uh, player screen here with, again, more absolutely gorgeous art and a nice at-a-glance summary of what all of her actions are that are available to her throughout the game. But like I said, because she's she is literally controlling three different pirates, that helps her narrow down her search locations. Okay. So Jen's got her starting positions, and now I've got to pick... Where do I bury my treasure? Before they uh, throw me uh, away and lock the key. Um, let's see here. Let's go on ahead and... Well, actually, I could pick any place. It can't be within the, the, the boundaries of these three red mountains. It can't be in the deep ocean, you know, beyond this outer edge, or this outer edge. Uh, and it can't be right next to any starting player. So those are the three things it can't be. Now, what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to pick a place anywhere I want and then find the matching tile here and set this aside. What I found is kind of annoying is I'll just go on ahead and pick a tile randomly and that'll help me choose where I'm going to bury it. Let's say uh, it's right up here. So it's somewhere, you can see this, it's somewhere in this section. So where am I going to put it in this section? And if you can see, there's a cool skull right here, a little skull mountain. I'll put it in the left eyeball. Now, of course, I'm not going to mark that. I'm not going to X marks the spot on the map because then game would be over. Jen would know exactly where it is. Instead, I've got my own little mini map version of the game and I mark that it's right there. Now, I said it's on the in the left eyeball, but you know, the size of these maps means it's anywhere close to this, which functionally means it's really kind of anywhere right around here. Uh, this is kind of like horseshoes. While Jen is searching, she doesn't have to get the exact location. She just has to get kind of close. She just has to get in the right ballpark, because that's about as big as my X is on my own little map. Alrighty, so I buried my treasure. I'm locked up. And now I have to give away starting hints. 
I will not give this away because this says the location is in it. This one is out of the game, basically. But I take the remaining ones, and I would give one of these to each player. Now, not to each pirate, because Jen is one player. Although I think the rules call her a pirate. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, but anyway, I give one of these to Jen. And it's this one. And that tells Jen that the treasure is nowhere in this area. This is a total, you know, so uh, having Blue search around in this area would be a total waste of Jen's time. Now, uh, she, behind her screen, takes her own little version of the map. Which is odd that um, they didn't do the, uh, you know, the bright and dark on it. It's colorful both sides. And she marks that, okay, it's not here. It's not here. And this gives you a pretty good idea of how hard it is to actually read the details um, on this super colorful map when you're using these colorful pens. If you really fall in love with Treasure Island and want to play it a lot, one of the things you're going to have to do is go out to an arts and craft store and buy pens that have colors that work better against these super busy maps that uh, are real. Well, I, I'm not, I'll get into final thoughts later. Anyway, so I'm not going to use that for Jen. I'm going to use the black because the black you can kind of see. So Jen knows... Don't waste your time with that section. It could be any place else, but it's not up there. And again, if there were more players, I would um, indicate to all those players uh, you know, a, a different clue. So everybody would have their information, which is why they keep it secret. In a two-player game, it doesn't matter. Jen doesn't even need this. In fact, in a two-player game, I could just go on ahead and draw it on the board itself because both me and her know what's what. But here's the thing. If I was playing with more human players, I would probably... See, because I know what I handed to player number one, to Jen. And I'd probably say Jen knows that this place is offline. Because the next player, Daisy, I might hand uh, this one. And so, I would say, okay, Daisy knows that it is not, uh, yeah, not down here. And so I'd write Daisy. Uh, you really, as the pirate player, have you have this section to take notes about you know who you've told what. Because you've got to keep track. Not everybody knows everything. Again, in a two-player game, all that disappears uh, because there's only one player and everybody knows everything that everybody knows. All right, but anyway. So, I know Jen uh, knows it's not there. Jen knows it's not there. If there are more players, we'd hand it out. And now, the next thing that happens as part of setup is I get my three starting clue cards. And these are bad. I don't want to give clues. These mean I'm actually telling Jen more and more information about where the treasure is. One, two, three. These are my starting clues. And let's see. Don't lose your bearings. Decoy. And a few more miles. Okay. So I've got this in my hand. And then finally, I also have to get a certain number of compasses. It's two plus the number of players. So we're playing a two-player game. So I have three compass clues. These are also clues I don't want to give out because they'll give Jen more and more and more information. But I can't avoid it because she's going to start interrogating me pretty soon. So anyway, so Jen keeps that for herself. She's made a note of that, and the game is afoot. Here's her little marker. If we were playing with more players, there might be a green and a blue player. Jen would go, and then the green player would go. Daisy would go, then Jen, then Daisy, then Jen, then Daisy, and so on. Um, and every time we move to a new space, they trigger all these different events. About half of the days have events. And if it keeps going like this until finally uh, Daisy goes, on day 19... I start getting to go as well. I bust out of prison, I appear on the map, and I start beelining towards my treasure, and hopefully they haven't found it yet. Now again, in a two-player game, the other token's gone, so this is just going to be our, our uh, turn marker. We start. It is day one, and we have to do an event. This event right here says, i got to give a clue. I have to tell Jen, don't lose your bearings, watch for the decoy, or go a few more miles. Let's see. And let's see, this one. Designate a miniature which is more than six miles away from the treasure. If it's possible, say it's so. So I say it isn't so. If that's impossible. So, uh, now this is an interesting thing. Often, uh, the, game com the game comes with all these different writing utensils and all that stuff. Often, I, ca I look at the map and I can't be quite sure. I can ask Jen to close her eyes and look away. And I could see that, yes, this guy is, he is within six. Alrighty. But obviously this one isn't, and this one is. I didn't need to. I could tell these ones are far away. You can also see there's a compass right here, or you know, a, you know, you know, a, a scale right here on the map also. So, I could play that. And then I would tell Jen, either this one or this one, that uh, the treasure is more than six away. And then what that would tell Jen is, well, she would make a circle on her map of size six, because, uh, you know, the game comes with... Well, I've already lost it. Comes, comes with a big uh, ruler you use on the map. It also comes with these little tiny rulers, these cute little adorable rulers that are the same scale that you can use on your private map. So if I use that, Jen would uh, make a note 
And she would just, you know, make a circle around that to indicate, okay, don't waste your time searching in that area. So I could give her that clue. That's not great. Although, you know what? It's not bad. Because I know Jen already knows about this. So if I do it here, I'm not going to be giving Jen much information that she doesn't already know. I think that's actually a pretty good one. I'll start out with... Not, not a few more miles. I'll start out... Yeah, a few more miles. No. Yes, a few more miles. Okay. I'm going to give the clue. Designate a miniature that is more than six miles away from the treasure. If that's impossible, say so. I designate this miniature! Okay. And it also says... Most of the time it says, draw uh, something on the map. To, um, you know, so, I have to draw a six-mile radius around this map. Which is where this cool little thing comes in. Alrighty. So, get out my, my pen. And slap it in here. And, alright. Got a little suction cup. Out of the way, buddy. Boop! Alright, where's the sixer? Alright, six right there. Alrighty. Six-mile radius. Woo! Woo! Okay. I have just, not only have I told Jen something, I've told all the pirate players something. Now in this game, since there's only Jen, I'm not giving her much information. But you know, another player might have known that, okay, it's not, say, this area. Then that other player, I've given them a bunch of information. I've given them almost a quarter of the map that they know they don't have to search. But in this two-player game, I already knew that Jen um, knew most of that area was off bounds. Jen already knew about all of this. So all I've really told her is this and a little bit of this. That, oh, and I'm also I'm supposed to mark, you know, uh, go something like this to, in, to tell everybody. So later on, as the game goes on, they can they can remember that. Oh, it's it's not within here. It's somewhere out there. All righty, and everybody knows that I just told the truth. As you can see, this little check mark here on my first clue means I ain't lying, Jack. Everybody knows. I've told everybody a lot of information, uh, which would have been painful. Um, so it's interesting. Long John Silver, with more players, has to juggle so much information. Um, whenever he decides to give a clue, which clue gives the least information to everybody? Um, in a two-player game, it's a lot easier because there's only one other person I'm worried about. All right. Anyway, though. So, uh, that was it. That was the event. I had to give a clue. And now I draw another one because I always have a hand of three. And I've got the sextant. That might be something I use um, on day three when I have to give another clue out. But now it is Jen's turn. On days one, two, three, four, five, and six, the single star here means each uh, the, a player on that day gets one action. Uh, and then starting on day seven, players get two actions a turn. So anyway, Jen gets to do one action, and here's all the actions she's got at a glance. She can move one of her miniatures, and because again, she's got three miniatures. Oh, go back there, mister. She can move one of her miniatures six, so he could, she can move him out of here, because he's not doing any good. He's in a total dead zone. Or she can move three and do a small search, or she could stand still and do a large search. These are the three main actions. But you've also got these special actions that are limited. She could use her special King George ability. Only Jen can um, send her little monkey, King George, out to do searches anywhere on the board she wants. She can do that action once. She can get two compass hints twice per game. She can do a full gallop once per game to just get anywhere she needs to go really quick, or she can do verification to find out if I'm lying when I give clues. Now, she doesn't need to do that. The first clue was a lie, but starting with day two, any clue, or the first was the truth. Starting with day two, any clue out there might be a falsity, might be a lie. So, um, but right now, Jen doesn't need to do verification. I think Jen will start out, though, with a compass. Jen is going to do a compass thing. Instead of doing one of her normal searches, which means she moves around and then she uses one of these to draw a search circle on the board and try to figure out where things is, Jen is going to try and narrow things down a little bit more. So, what Jen does is she takes... Where is it? Where is it? The big compass. It's around here somewhere. Uh, there are so... Oh, here it is. Urf. Jen uh, picks one of her three pirates. She will pick Greeny over here. She puts the compass around here, and now I have to give her, or, and, and Jen marks that she has done this. Boop, boop. All right, she, she'll be able to do this again. So now I have to give Jen one of these compasses. And these tell her two directions that the treasure is not. Oh, boy. Okay, and I can't give her this one because I can't lie about this stuff. I can't give her this one because I would be saying, oh, wait, no, I could. This is legit. I could give her this one because the treasure's right here. This would go right by it, so it's not on the eyeball. It'd be close, but uh, it's not. It's not quite there. So I could tell her it's not in this zone or this zone. That's not too damaging. 
Now instead, I could give her this one and tell her it's not in this zone, which doesn't tell her very much. She knew most of that. Or it's not in this zone, but that would be a lot. That would be telling her all of this is dead. I am not giving her this one. Uh, this one is the same. I'm not giving her this one because I don't want to tell her that all of this is no good. Alrighty, this one. Um, this one, again, would be a huge chunk of change. Well, one of them wouldn't be too bad. It's not telling her much. But the other one is telling her a lot. I don't want to give her that one. Uh, this one tells her, I don't want to give her that one. I think I'm going to give her this one. So I gave Jen that. And what she's supposed to do is, because remember, Jen is supposed to keep her information secret and you know, uh, you know, safeguarded for herself. She is supposed to take this information, take her own little map, and use the little tiny compass. Oh, look, it is so adorable compared to the big one. This is scaled for here. Put it on the uh, green starting. And because Jen knows this, she can go like this. Beep, beep. And, um, there we go. Wah! Wah! That is really close. Where's that eyeball? Hmm. I, maybe I can't get this clue. Alright, so, Jen would know that, um, oh, and by the way, she'd also know, uh, it's not, oh, okay, there's no circle in there. Alright, of course. Forgot about that. Alright, so Jen would know it's nowhere in here, in the same way she knows it's not over there. So, she has narrowed down more stuff. And that's not really that great for her. She was hoping to get a bit more information. She got some, but you know that's the risk with a compass. If, because I have a finite number of compasses in my hand, and I'm always hoping that if I have to give a compass, it can be one that doesn't do much damage. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. You can see the eyeball is, um, I am nowhere close to that eyeball. So I that was legit. So Jen knows it could be in here, but hey, it's more likely somewhere down here. And that's perfect. I'm very happy about that because I don't want her to know nothing. Um, right. So that was Jen's whole turn. The clock, she's a ticking. I gave a clue. That was the event. And then Jen did one action. She used one of her decumpses. We move on to the next day. Now, this would be another player, but instead, in a two-player game, this is Jen. And um, the event today is I Can Now Bluff. I've got all these truth-telling seals that I have to use, but I have one bluff. So in the future, on the next day, when I have to give a clue, it might be a lie. Might not. All right, so anyway, that was it. And now Jen gets to do her single action. And what is she going to do? So she can do that compass thing again. Um, but here's the risk. Maybe, she doesn't know what I've got. Maybe, um, she ha maybe I have compasses that will just tell her this direction and this direction, which wouldn't be very much. Um, so, Jen could do that, but Jen is instead going to save her other compass for later as time is ticking and she wants to narrow things down. Uh, so what else could she do? She could have King George just do a search any place. She'll save that for when she needs it. Uh, she could find out if this was the truth, but she knows it's the truth. She could gallop, which is instantly to teleport any place, any of her guys. But instead, Jen is actually going to start searching. Jen knows it could be anywhere down here. So Jen says, I'm going to have my red guy go on a walkabout. So, remember, her red guy could move up to six miles, could move three and do a search, or could just do a large search. Now, there's no reason to do a large search, because the large search area around all these characters was already eliminated during setup. So we can ignore that. Jen is going to travel three miles. All right. And she can go in any direction. The only thing she can't do is she cannot walk through these mountains. She can't go for a swim out in the deep ocean. So what does she want to do with red? Does she want Red to start searching down around here or up here? It could be any place. Um, oh, you know what? You know what? You know, no, no, no. Jen's not going to have Red do it. Jen's going to have Green go. I think this will make a little bit more sense. Jen's going to have Green move. All right, so we, uh, this is where Jen starts. Take the green pen because it's green moving. Jen will move up to three. She could be anything up to three, so she could go travel. She's going to travel as far as she can. She wants to get to the center of the island. Mm, does she want to do that? No, no, no. She will go with Green. Sorry. She, or with red. She'll do red instead. I think that makes a little bit more sense. Back home green. Jen will have red start moving out. Move it, move it. With the red pen. All righty. And now we mark, here's where red is. And since she did a, a small move, she can also do a small search. Now she can move this any way she wants so long as the X indicating where she is is still in here. Uh, I should probably zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. There we go. So Jen has moved, and uh, she could do this search any way she wants. After she draws a circle, I'll say, now I know full well because it's way up here, but um, Jen will just go like this to try to eliminate as much space between these two as possible. Or actually, yeah, as possible. So she'll go like this. Woo! Whoop, 
And then I have a choice to make. It's not a big choice, but it is a choice. I can, first of all, if she won, if the treasure was in here, um, and, and it doesn't have to be called, I mean, if I had, let's see, where is that? If I had originally said that the treasure was kind of like here, uh, you know, you could say, wait a minute, well, she's kind of there, but she's kind of not. D is there overlap? Is there not? You can never, um, as the Long John player, you always just have to say, okay, you know, it's like horseshoes. If they're near enough, is good enough. And so, I would have to say, you found it, even though, strictly speaking, maybe if I'd gone like this, okay, is it really close? It's right on the edge. You just have to say, okay, you were close enough, boom, you found it. All right. But she's not. She's a million miles away. So, I, t I could just say, no, you didn't find it. And everybody would hear that. And everybody would know that. Or, I could say, yes, you found it, in which case the game is over, she won. Or, here's the funky thing. The game comes with this nice little treasure chest here. This cool little thing. What I can do is, I can open it up. I can take one of these six bonus tokens, and I could give it to Jen. I put it in the chest. I close the chest, and I hand it to her. She opens it. Actually, what I'm supposed to do is, as part of the drama, if Jen had actually found it, I don't just say you won. I open the chest. I put the actual treasure in it, give it to her, she opens the chest, and then she's surprised. So it's a nice little bit of fun. Definitely enhances the mood. But, you know, and so I've handed this to her. She doesn't know what's in it. She says, oh, did I win? Did I win? Did I win? And it's like, nope. But I got a cool bonus. And these bonuses are very valuable. Stuff like, um, you know, Jen can use this whenever she wants, and um, ask, is the treasure in this district? And so she could rule out a district she's in. Or um, one free action of her choice on a turn. Or one free movement of seven miles. Or um, one free small search action. Or uh, the treasure is west of a pirate. Jen could use that. Uh, or the treasure is east of a pirate. So I could give her this sort of information. Um, you know, and I'd, I'd basically be giving her, you know, these bits of information right now. And so, again, I have a bit of control. Do I want to give her this stuff? Um, no, I don't want to tell her. I don't want to tell her that this region is totally safe. I could do the one. I think there's one for south, isn't there? No, there's one for east and west. I could say it's east. I don't want to do any of these. But I could, if I wanted to, give her the. Um, oh, which one? Uh, the. I could give her. One free movement. Let's say I'm going to do that. I'm not just going to tell you no, she is wrong. Instead, I'm going to put this in here. Remember, I do all this behind my screen so nobody knows. I hand this over to Jen. Everybody's waiting. Did she find it? And she says, oh, that's interesting. And she takes this and she puts it behind her screen. And you know, if I'd given her information, she'd mark that on her own little board. But instead, I've given her... Um, she can use this on a future turn to move an extra bonus space. Now, why did I do that? Why did I give her any kind of advantage at all? The reason for that is... You'll notice I've got decoy. This is a better clue for me to give than most of the others. It doesn't give as much information away. It allows me to hold my cards close to my chest. But I cannot play it unless I've given away at least one of those little treasure tokens. So now that I've given Jen a treasure token, or any player, I could play this decoy in the future, uh, which I might want to do, depending if the timing is right. So anyway, that was Jen's turn. She moved, she did a search, and hey, she got a little bit of treasure for it. And uh, then we move on to the next round, where, once again, I've got to give out a clue. And I don't want to, but if I wanted, I could now use this decoy, which is specifically, I didn't talk about what it is, um, find the miniature closest to the treasure, which is going to be green, Green's very close. Nobody knows it, but that's scary. Name it and any other miniature of your choice um, without saying which is which. So if I wanted, I could... Because I remember, I have to play a clue. It's public information. Everybody knows. But um, since I gave Jen, I could do this. And what I would do is, I would say... It's one of these two. Because everybody knows. I mean, we already know for a fact it can't be this guy because he's way out. I'll say, it's one of these two um, guys. It's closest. And if I do that right now, I'm not really telling Jen anybody very much. I'm giving away very information. So, I think now is a good time to give out my decoy. Um, and I will say, one of these two miniatures is the closest to the treasure. Um, and now maybe if you want to get out a ruler, that gives you a little bit of information. Okay, so it's not him, but we already know he's six away, etc., etc. But anyway, because I've done this, um, and I'm telling the truth, by the way. I didn't have to. I could play this face down, and I could be lying if I used my one bluff counter. Now as it is, I'm saving my bluff for when I need it, because I don't think this gives away much information. I just say, decoy. One of these two is real, the other one is a decoy. You guys can figure it out. 
And if you want to know if I'm telling the truth or not, you are going to have to waste one of your precious confirmation actions to get to take a look. You don't flip it over for everybody to see. Instead, players look at it and they make a note to themselves. Well, you know, because everybody's got this, they can keep track of notes, whether it's true or false. Now, like I said, in this case, I don't think it gave very much away um, because of this first clue I gave. But anyway, so that was it. I've given another clue. I've actually told the truth, even though I didn't have to. And Jen says, uh, okay. Well, then um, it could be this red. It couldn't be blue. So, I mean, I strictly speaking, she now knows, based on the distance between this and this, she can probably eliminate a few little places, but not too terribly much. Alrighty, and now Jen gets to take another action. And here's the thing. Jen, um, she moved here, did the search less because, I mean, it was a, it was a pot shot. What were the chances she was going to get it in all this space? Jen did there because she wants to do a compass again. And she didn't want to do a compass down here because then I might have eliminated just a tiny little portion. Now that she's a little bit more, or does she want to get more inland? No, no, she's going to do the compass again. She says, hey, I want to know, give me another one of those clues. And this is Jen's last shot at this. So she's hoping she's going to put me in a bind because I don't really have a good thing. Um, because, you know, Jen doesn't have a lot of information yet. So it's better to use these sooner than later. And I should mention, by the way, that only Anne Bonnie, the pirate that Jen is playing right now, has the ability to do two compass searches. All the other ones only have one compass search they can ever do. Now, where did my compasses go? Oh, here they are. So I've got to give her one of these. Arr, alrighty. So there's that and that. Okay, this isn't very much. And this is... That's not very much. That's this and this. That's not too painful. Don't want to do that. That's a big chunk. So not that one. Not that one. Mm, this one is not legal because this one, again, the, it is, so I couldn't play that one. I'm going to play this one. And so, uh, Jen takes this behind her shield. She finds where her red guy is. Uh, you know, he's kind of right about, where is he? He's kind of right about here. And um, where did the mini compass go? So, Jen knows not this way and not this way. Okay. So, again... Not that much. So, the timing worked out well for me. Jen took a gamble. No, she, did, she it's not bad. She has eliminated all of this. Of course, previously, she had eliminated all of this as well. So, Jen is getting closer. She is as a narrowed some more stuff down here. All righty. As you can see, and of course, only Jen knows this. If we were playing with more players, the way Jen, you know, everybody else now knows that Jen has gotten two compass actions. So she's eliminated a lot of space. And that means wherever Jen starts searching, that's probably where other players want to start searching as well. That's where the real magic of this game comes in. When you're playing with lots of players, and the Long John Silver player is taking notes like crazy because he has to remember who knows what and when and where. And the individual players are studying each other like hawks because you know more than I do. I'm going to start copying you and search in the same area you're searching in. So you get you get information passively. In a two-player game, everything's just all kind of out in the open. And in fact, you don't even need these mini-maps. You could just draw everything on the main map if you wanted. Um, which, again, makes things easy. But anyway, so that was Jen's whole turn, and now she cannot get any more compasses. But she's, she, she's not too uh, upset. Plus, remember, she's got this one time she wants. She can move. And we go on to the next day, day four. A special thing happens. The players all have to agree, as a group, where do they throw me in a tower? There are several towers. These little uh, black spaces. Tower, 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 tower. Um, tower. Uh, tower. And they want to put me in the tower that is farthest away from where they think the treasure is. This is an opportunity for players to get information. Because everybody would now, hey, hey, Jen, where do you think should go? Because Jen, by saying, oh, you should put it over here, she's kind of giving away some passive information. Now, I think the obvious thing would be to pick one of these two towers, because I gave it right up front that I, you know, that the treasure is at least six away. So they might put me here or here, and say they put me there. I don't mind that too much, because I know... I'm fairly close to my treasure. It'd be a bit more of a bummer. It'd be a bit farther away here. The worst thing would be if they put me way down here in this tower, because then I'm really far away. And when I make a beeline on day 19, when I start making a run for my treasure, they can see which way I'm running and try and cut me off. Um, so they'll put me over here, and I'm like, okay, okay, I can work with that. Although it's kind of a problem as well, because you cannot move. I would have to go boop, and then boom. So it's going to take me one, two, three moves. Because I forget. I think I moved. I have to look it up. So one, two, three moves to get to my treasure. So I'd be giving them three more days as I try to go around this mountain. I mean, I'd be very happy if they just put me right here. 
But Jen you, um, would be very quick to say, I eh, probably shouldn't put it there. Because remember, Jen knows, um, well, she knows that, um, you know, that it could be in this area still. And that would be very dangerous to put me right here because then I'd just be a single move away. So Jen agrees, hey, yeah, let's go in and put it there. Um, because, well, everybody else know, you know, Jen knows why well, you can kind of see what Jen knows and what everybody, again, it doesn't matter. There's only one player. So I am now here and now Jen gets to do another action. She can't do any more compasses. So, um, she just has to wait for more clues. I'm going to give another clue. And then on day seven, I'm going to throw away these clues and get these. I'll have three of these clues. And these clues are even more powerful. The black mark spots. Although there are a lot more of these treasure chest ones in here. So I'm going to want to give Jen more treasures so I can play more. Uh, I, could, I can make Jen go on instinct or deduction rather than tell her she's getting close or giving her another compass. Ah, I don't want to do that. So anyway... Um, and then, because that's the point, I have to start giving out dark spots. On day 10, I get another bluff, so I can do a second bluff, but then another clue, another clue. And by the way, Jen is taking two turns per action now instead of one. Another clue. And eventually, if Jen has not found the treasure by day 19, that's when I bust out, and I can start taking turns opposite Jen, and I can start moving. And if I can get to the treasure spot before Jen searches the treasure spot, I would win. Um, but we're a long ways away from that because uh, you know uh, the, this event happened. Jen is going to do a search again, and Jen says, "Hey, you know what? I should probably, you know, looking at this, she decides maybe I should go on ahead and just eliminate this, or should she just search around here? I mean, this isn't much space. So Jen says, "Hey, you know what? I'm just going to do a, I'm going to do a little search, just a little search. Um, bop, 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 bop. Except I, oh, here we go, just a little search." And uh, she says, oh, I'm just going to go ahead off in this direction. One, two, three. And uh, where'd the little circle go? Here we go. And what the heck? Let's just go on ahead. Say I'm standing here. And I'll go like this. Boop. And I'm like, gulp. Yikes. And I say, uh, no, no, you're, you're nowhere there at all. Of course, I could give her another clue if I wanted, but I don't have to. Because uh, it's not like I have any other um, special uh, limited clues uh, yet. I've just got vast expanse, sexton, and don't lose your bearing. So anyway, so that was that. And I say, no, you didn't find anything. But now I'm terrified. If Jen keeps on, uh, you know, Jen could just systematically start trying to do a search pattern throughout here, and she will eventually find it. But, you know, that's just dumb luck on her part. I got to give her a clue that tries to let her go some other way. And what do you know? We're on day five. I got to give another clue. Sexton, position the big compass. Indicate three directions. The treasure is in one of them. So, you know, I could put the big compass over here. Um, and at the very least, I could say, yeah, you know what? It's like this, or it's like this, or like this. That could be pretty cool. Um, because that might help Jen ignore the little sliver. Because there'd be, if Jen's good about keeping track, she'll know, oh, there's still this sliver up here, and she might do it, or she might say, ah, to heck with it. Um, although that's pretty obvious, too. If I did that, I'd be saying, don't look in this section. So maybe I shouldn't do that. Don't lose your bearings. Uh, or a two-player game. Pick one mancher for each one. Reveal all the treasure is north or south of this position. Um, or vast expanse. Designate a mancher within eight miles of the treasure. If that's impossible, say so. Uh, of course, I, it's not impossible. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What I could do. I could say, let's just do vast expanse. This is my third quote. I'm not saying it's the best one. And designate a mancher within eight miles of the treasure. If that's impossible, say so. I designate you. And I'm totally lying. Boop. That's a lie. That's a big fat lie. And but still, uh, it, as it does say, draw an eight-mile mark around. So I got to get this back out. And so everybody sees this. That I have said this guy is within. Come here, you. Boop. Boop. All right, there we go. Close enough. Oh, but I didn't take the cap off. Ah! All right. Get back on there. Gotta get you out of the way. Hwa! Hwa! So I am telling everybody that it is within eight miles of this character. Get back over there, Greeny. Okay. Now, that, at a glance, doesn't tell him that much. It just tells him, okay, well, I'm telling, ignore this area, ignore this area. Because the clue is somewhere in this region. Because I've told them about the vast expanse. 
And now everybody has to wonder, is that true? Is that false? Because um, this is still a big area to search. And Jen says, oh, you know what? It's likely. I mean, that's still a big area. That's, it's likely I'm telling the truth. But am I? Am I decoying her away from the reality of it? Jen's got to make that decision. Anyway, that was a clue, and now Jen can take an action. Jen can continue to move around and search, or she could stand still. Remember she did a little search? She could have him do a big search. She could have him do several big searches if she wants. Like the old spiralizers. Or she could have her monkey go search anywhere. Or she could use one of her two tests and, and find out, is, that, is he telling the truth? And I say, oh no, maybe I'm lying, maybe I'm telling the truth. And so, all Jen has discovered is, I might be bluffing when I said that. And what that means is, Jen has to wonder, I could be, this could be true, this could be a lie. Now, of course, if we were more players, only Jen would know that, because um, she would get to look at it. And Jen has to decide, did I do this to distract her, or... Did I do this knowing that she would think I was distracting her and therefore she wouldn't trust me because it really is down here? And she has to decide that for herself. She's got no real information. So uh, it's, it, she's got to get into my mindset and wonder how likely am I to lie or tell the truth. Of course, I was lying now. I'm trying to draw her down here. But I know she would think that, which means I might be telling the truth to throw her off the trail. And that was it. That was Jen's action. We're on to day six. And today, no event happens. Jen... Um, she could find out if this one's true or not, but she's pretty confident uh, about that one. Um, she could just use this to teleport anywhere she wants, or she could just keep on searching around um, while waiting for the next day for me to um, have to swap out my old clues for new clues, like deduction or instinct or right under your nose. And now if you want, you can go on to Board Game Geek and download the rulebook. All the cards that are in the game, all the clues are spelled out there so you can get a sense for what all is available. But folks, I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basics of Treasure Island. If you want to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.